Hi, hi. Welcome back to another episode on the Healthy Wisdom Series with Dr. Jen Chen. You guys, today we're going to continue talking about not just setting goals, but, you know, how to actually create a vision or cast a vision so that you, whatever it is that you're working towards, it fits that vision that you have for your life, for your career, for your education, for whatever direction it is that you want to take into your life. You know, there's this quote that I really, really um, uh, made an impression on me uh, when I saw it, but actually we um, don't know who this quote is from. And it is a little bit of a play on words. It says, the difference between try and triumph is a little oomph. I thought that was so clever when I heard that. I was just like, wow. I love this quote and I'm going to share this on my podcast because it is such a cool little play on words, but at the same time, it's a really deep, (laughs) in a sense, it's a very deep um, interpretation of um, how we approach things, you know, and the attitude that we are uh, use in, in, or that we put towards in our lives and in the things that we do, right? So here's the thing. Once you cast your vision, like last week, we talked about setting goals and, you know, creating, you know, um, a a direction or a path by which you are going to take, you know, what is it that you want? And 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 the next step is, you know, the, the easier it is that you can actually almost paint a picture about it and you know what it looks like, what it tastes like, what it feels like, you know, the more concrete it can become reality in your mind, the more likely it is that you will achieve it. So remember last week I shared about, you know, the story of um, where I had to propose to my dad um, about uh, uh, learning uh, how to play the piano and, you know, sort of almost it was like kind of like a um, a signing a contract, actually, um, uh, in, in terms of him making the investment in me and my piano lessons um, in order for me to actually gain that new skill set of being able to become a piano teacher. Um, You know, so at the beginning, I had to have, have the vision of one day when I've achieved all the different grades and finished all the exams leading up to the completion of that diploma that I would be then accredited with um, the ability to teach other piano, uh, other other kids how to play the piano. So there needed to have been a vision of that, right, for me to actually achieve that. And let me tell you, it was not an easy journey, but I what I can say is it was well worth it. Because nowadays, um, whenever, you know, uh, I, I feel that um, I feel I feel a sense of security that comes from that. Um, and it's because I know that um, no matter what it is that I decide to do in life, I always have a backup plan. And it's a really good feeling to have that. It's almost like, you know, how like you say for a rainy day, you know, you have um always like six months, you know, stashed away um, as an emergency fund. Well, that is sort of my emergency fund for my career, because if I ever injure my shoulder bad enough as, you know, a chiropractor, um, then at least I know that, you know, if I cannot actually adjust another person in my life ever again, which I certainly hope is not the case, because I really want to, I want to continue to be a chiropractor until I'm like 90 years old. Years old. I, I literally, I love my profession. I love what I do. And I, I just love everybody that I see at my clinic. And I cannot imagine doing anything else you know, and so I always joke with my patients that, you know, um, even when I reached like my, you know, late 70s, late 80s, you know, early 90s, I'm still going to be going to work. <laughs> I mean, I may not be working on as many patients <laughs> um, and I may not be working as many days, but I certainly will be working until I croak, literally the day that I die. So um, chiropractic has really become a very big part of my life. 
life. And, you know, it's, it's hard to find something that you absolutely love to do. And I'm truly grateful that, you know, I am in a career where I just absolutely love love it. I love it. Like I'm actually like pumped to go to work every day. If, if you can imagine that. So I certainly hope that, you know, people, um, can also get on that track where, you know, they can find something that they're absolutely driven and passionate to do. Um, so one of the things that I also, uh, have maybe developed over the years is an attitude of, you know, doing it right. You know, I I like to do things right. And I try to get it right the first time. But you know, that doesn't happen always, because you know, we also learn from our mistakes. And you know, as a piano player, you know, you make plenty of mistakes. And so um, whenever it is possible, I try to do it right. You know, I try to learn it right. And um, one of the pieces, I guess, the, the more attitude portion of it is that, you know, I, I I always sort of tell myself, you know, if I can't do it right, then I might as well not do it at all, right? So just don't do it if you're not going to be able to do it right, right? Because honestly, if you're just half-assing it, it, it's a waste of time for everybody, right? So I do have to say, you know, I had to kind of learn that the hard way too, because um, as I've mentioned last week, you know, when you get to the higher levels in piano, it wasn't easy, like, you know, juggling all the different schedules and, and, and the, all the different areas of my life that was consuming my time. Um, I gotta say, I wasn't prepared every single week when I was at my piano teacher's, um, house and, you know, I had to play the pieces for her. Uh, there were times where she had to sit me down and go, Jen, today was not your best day, was it? And, you know, we had pretty serious heart to heart talks, you know, and she's like, you know, you got to you got to get down to business. You got to be serious about this, because if you're going to take this exam, you got to be 120 percent ready. Otherwise, don't take the exam. Let's just postpone it and let's keep working on it until you're ready for the exam. And I remember like it hitting me pretty hard, you know, that I felt like, wow, I have just failed not just my teacher, I've also failed my parents and I failed myself because I didn't give it 120%. And you know, there are days when you, you know, you know, when you've given your 120%. And there are also days when you know, you did not, like you kind of like gave it maybe 80%, maybe 90%. You didn't give it all you had, right? And so I knew deep down whenever, you know, like, like she, she knew, she knew, you know, my piano teacher was, you know, like we, (laughs) we had developed like a very, like, um, very good relationship. And, and she knew when I wasn't giving 120%, she knew because she, she knew that I'm, I'm one of those people that will always give 120%, whatever it is that I did. And when I wasn't giving it, she would call me out on it. And I absolutely love her for it because that's probably why she was the number two um, teacher in Vancouver um, in piano. And, uh, you know, having double master's degrees, you know, she she's like probably one of the most qualified. Right. You know, I had previously transferred to her from the number one um, piano teacher in Vancouver and the lower mainland. Um, so um it is, and it's just because, you know, the timing, um, uh, with my course load getting heavier, like there was just no way I could, uh, drive all the way and, and, and spend, uh, 45 minutes each, each trip to make it to my previous teacher who was the best teacher in the lower mainland. But I just did not have the extra time to commute back and forth, but he had, um, very highly recommended, uh, my, 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 um, my other teacher who amazing. I mean, I love her to death. She is so amazing. Um, honestly, I, I would, I consider the two of them actually the best teachers in the lower mainland. I wouldn't say one over the other. Absolutely. Cause they had slightly different, um, uh, expectations and, uh, skill sets. So they both like were just stellar, stellar teachers, you know, taught me not just about piano, but also about life and also about, you know, valuing 
what I was doing, you know. So I think part of the reason why I also value chiropractic so much as a profession and 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 as a career is because of the love and the value that you know my teacher had instilled in me, you know, uh, uh, for the love of piano and pedagogy, you know, and the the love for teaching, you know, because uh, in my profession right now, you know, as a chiropractor, we also teach a lot. We teach people about their health. We teach uh, people about you know how to take care of their bodies, you know, so that they can actually maximize whatever it is you know that they're doing um, or not doing, right? So uh, we we do a lot of teaching, and so. Um, in ARCT, when you're working towards the teacher's diploma, you do uh, an entire two years course work in pedagogy, which actually means teaching, the study of teaching, which is also really amazing. So if you have kids and you're listening to this, I absolutely recommend if you if you have your kids in piano lessons, please, please, if you can absolutely try to push them. No, literally just push them to finish till the end because the sense of accomplishment and 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 the values and the knowledge and the experience and the abilities that they'll gain from like mastering the instrument but also mastering the teaching of that instrument is going to be invaluable for the days to come it it's not just about you know learning an instrument it's about life you know there there's just so much that comes from it that you cannot you cannot learn again just in school this is something that's just beyond that and yeah like i derive a lot of my values and my principles from you know the experiences that i've had you know in my piano career um as well as my chiropractic career and you know as we go along i'll be sharing a lot more about you know sort of how i got you know sort of um to the I guess the the way that I see things, um, because every single part of my life, it's almost as if it's been orchestrated for me to be able to share a different perspective into life and and uh, the different aspects of uh, the sciences and the arts, you know, it, it's just like an, an, a beautiful culmination that I've been exposed to. And um, I've also been extremely, tr- extremely lucky to be able to to see it from a, quite a different perspective. You know, I am always one of those like, I don't know, the unicorns of the world um, where I get to not just experience it, but I also learn and I share it from a different perspective. And so it kind of brings people a different way and a different angle of uh, um, sort of uh, it almost breaks some stereotypes or um, uh, or or how do you say like it frames it in a different way that then people go oh wow I never thought of you know that that I, I would have never imagined that this is what it is you know so um, I certainly look forward to sharing you know all of that with you guys in you know you know the next gazillion episodes that we will have as we go along but yeah so you know so 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 the first thing is you know forming that vision what it is that you want what does it look like and the second thing that we just talked about, do it right or don't do it at all, right? You just don't half-ass anything that you're going to do in life. You know, give it 120%. Because if you're not giving it 100% or 120%, then you're not going to feel as satisfied at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, think about it, you know, any any boxer in the ring, if they never reach the 120 percent that they could have given and they actually lost the match imagine the sense of disappointment and what ifs that they would have in their heads right about not giving it 120 percent right they could have given it all right it could have been a huge championship title you know usually um i think in practically all types of tournaments or competitions the prize money between the first place and the second place is like worlds away, right? You could be looking at a million dollars for, you know, the grand prize, whereas second place will only get tens of thousands. 
Right. It's still pretty good than, you know, be much better than like not getting anything at all. But do you see like it's, it's, it's like such a huge discrepancy between the first and the second prize, right? Just like, you know, in the Olympics, you know, I know, I know you should always be satisfied if you're at the podium.